Everybody. Hey, Char. Hey, Gary. Hey, everybody. Hey, Joe. Hey, D. Awesome that you guys could be here. Um, let me know if you can hear okay. Um, it always seems like when I try and use my cool setup, my ultra setup, that works really great for going live on YouTube and going live on Facebook. It sucks through here every time. So I'm just using a regular microphone right now. So hopefully, hey, how you doing, Arthur? Hey, Lamont. Hopefully you guys can hear my voice okay and you can hear my guitar okay. Um, I did get your questions. I've got them sitting over here. And so, okay, awesome, Char. Thank you so much. Um, so my hope is, is that you're going to be able to hear the music and the guitar. Now, I'm not going to play all kinds of fast stuff. I'm just having fun here, just trying to warm up a little bit. Um, hey, Marcus. Hey, Greg. Okay, awesome, Arthur. Thank you. Um, so what I want to do is talk a little bit about this whole mode thing that is kind of confusing some of you. And again, I get it, okay? But I, what I want you to do is I want you to try and take a step back. First of all, how many on this call say yes if you were at the last live session or no if you were not? Because that's going to help out a lot. Hey, Andy. Hey, Jube. Um, because I don't want to go through that whole thing again that I did last time um, because that'll take another 30 minutes to talk about. So... Uh, can you guys, is it cutting out for you or can you hear me okay? Okay, yes, 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 no, okay. Arthur, I hope you were able to watch the replay that I had posted in the Facebook group. Okay, yes, awesome, awesome. Hey, Steve. Okay, it looks like everybody uh, was able to watch it except maybe Arthur and hopefully he watched the replay. Um, let me know if you have any, okay, Randy says it sounds fine, that's awesome. Okay, so guys, Let's just go ahead and jump right in and because we only have an hour and I want to try and get this so you really kind of understand again the bigger picture and then the refinements of it because now you're you're later into the the mode stuff and hopefully it's kind of kind of making a little sense to you. But I'm just gonna tell you that for the most part, um hold on a second. Put that up just a little bit. For the most part, modes they can be as deep as you want them to be. The problem is, hey, how you doing, buddy? Uh, the problem is, is if you start off by trying to make them super complicating, there's really very little hope of actually being able to use them. So my method of teaching modes is always trying to understand the concept of the mode and then how to apply that to the fretboard. And then the third level, which is what we want to talk about a little bit today, is how to utilize the modal qualities. So the last time we met, we talked about like what modes are and and so let me just recap okay because I've got an example I'm going to show you today that hopefully will help you a little bit with understanding modes a bit better uh, because again it, it's it's if you if you step back if you zoom out and you think about modes it's far easier than you might be making it okay so again if we if we discount the guitar entirely Forget about the guitar and just understand what is a mode. And we're not going to spend, um, Randy says, what is the mode's Facebook uh, page link? If somebody 
because I'm going to talk. If somebody has time to go find it, that's great. And if you want to just wait until the end, Randy, I promise I'll get you that, okay? Just need to remind me, okay? Um, otherwise, if somebody is just sitting there and they already have it up, you can just throw it in there and, and Randy can click on it. Um, and then we'll get you signed up, Randy. Um, if you're not already part of the, the Moats Facebook group, I'll go over there afterwards and I'll get you, get you signed up in there. Um, so anyway, if, if we think about this, if we look at the key of C, okay? So again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time because we already talked about this last time, but if we're in the key of C, we get seven notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, okay? Joe says, the modes made easy have been amazing, Steve. It has changed my playing. I am so happy to hear that, Joe. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing for me too, and I think today is going to be kind of eye-opening for some of you but but you got to trust me okay you got to trust me and and uh, try not to get way too crazy in your brain with this okay so again if we're in the key of C we have seven notes C D E F G A and B historically when we talk about music we talk about major and minor that's what we talk about so a song is in you know a minor right so if I'm in a minor again I don't have the perfect tone for this but if I'm in a minor I'm using an a minor chord <laughs> you know, whatever it might be. I'm, I'm playing something, right? So A minor is my main chord, so we call it being an A minor. If I play something where, for instance, C major is my main chord, okay, then we call it being in major. So for us, the shortcut is that when people say major, they're talking about the one chord in the key of C. Now, we're just going to stay in the key of C for now. We're not going to shift around in other keys and get confusing. We're just in the key of C. So those seven notes generate seven chords, right? So whenever you're in a major key, and again, in, in my brain, in my theory, in my logic, and the way I learned how to do it in school, is that anything unless it doesn't make any sense to begin with. If, if you're learning something, if you're learning a song that doesn't make any sense, I always call it the theory of rock and roll. It's got its own set of rules. It's not following a theoretical logic. Some songs are completely illogical. Some songs are a little illogical. And some songs are completely logical. We're going to be talking about completely logical right now. So we are in the key of C. We get seven notes, which get seven chords. And those seven chords are... 1, 4, and 5 is always major, 2, 3, 6 is always minor, and 7 is always diminished. Now again, it's really important to learn that because if, as you go down this mode path, again, I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but as you go down this mode path, you can always come back to being in a major key. Okay, and we're going to talk about that in just a second, but please remember that. So in the key of C major, I get C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and then B diminished. And again, we're not going to worry about the diminished chord right now. This isn't a theory course, and most of the time we don't really play that diminished chord much anyway, and even when we do, we don't really play it correctly in theory. Okay? Yes, Ingve Malmsteen and people use diminished chords, but they don't use them necessarily in the theoretical sense all the time. But that's a whole other conversation. So, we've got these seven chords primarily six chords that we're going to use in our music, right? When we emphasize the C major chord, which is the one chord in the key of C major, we call it being in the key of C major, okay? So let me show you an example of that. I'm going to play a guitar track here, and hopefully you can kind of hear it. It's just a C major track, okay? So here it is. One, two, three, four. And it's playing C to an F. That's all it's doing, over and over and over. So now I'm just going to play a C major scale. Maybe, it, okay, hold on. Because i got to figure out if this is causing a problem before I start tweaking everything. It, can everybody kind of hear that okay? Is it too loud? Does it seem okay? We have one person that's saying that it's it's cutting out, and I want to make sure that it's not too bad for you guys. So let me know if, if it kind of sounds okay to you. I'm going to play again. Okay. Okay. 
So there's my sound, okay? I'm going to lower the volume of that track just a little bit. Okay. So my point is, is right now what's happening is I'm playing a C chord to an F chord. That's what my jam track is doing. That's what my song is doing. And now I'm playing a C major scale over the top of this, which makes sense. I'm in the key of C. My main chord is C, right? My home chord, my key, I'm in the key of C, all right? Now let's not get into the F and all that stuff just yet. Let's just say I'm in the key of C, okay? So for you and I, when we're talking about slang, musical slang, when people say, oh, this song's in the key of G major, or this song's in the key of A, my, a major, excuse me, or this song is in the key of D major, they're always talking about the one. Whenever somebody summarizes as being in the key of G major, oh, this song's in the key of G, this song's in the key of D, this song's in the key of A, they're talking about the one chord. As musicians, whenever somebody says D major or, or in the key of D major or the key of A major, the key of C major, they're talking about the one chord. Now, we also know that we don't have to keep saying major all the time. If I tell you, hey, um, old time rock and roll is in the key of G, I'm saying G major. I'm saying the one chord. That's, that's the main chord is G. We're going to go other places, but the main chord is G, G major. Okay? I think you all understand that. So here's what happens is then the slang for minor is the sixth chord in the key of whatever major you're in. Okay? So if somebody says to you, oh, hey, I'm in the, this song is in the key of A minor. Well, if we think about it, we have a, a scale that has three major chords and three minor chords. So the confusion sometimes is, well, when people are say that they're major or they're minor, which one are they talking about? Are they talk if they say major, are they talking about the one or the four or the five? If they're minor, are they talking about the two, the three, or the six? And the, the truth is that whenever somebody just slangly talks about, I don't know if slangly is a word, but slangly talks about major, they're talking about the one chord. Whenever somebody uses the slang of minor, they're talking about the six chord in some major key. And we have to use mathematics to be able to figure out what major key we're really in. So if somebody says to you, hey, this song is in the key of A minor, then you have to think, oh, okay, so A minor is the six chord of what major key? And what would the answer be? I'll give you a second. So if I said I was in A minor, what key am I really in? What major key am I really in? C major. Thank you, Arthur. That's right. C. That, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Okay. Joe, not the key of G because A would be the six chord. So B would be the seven chord. So C would be the eight or one chord. Or you can work your way backwards, right? A, G, F, E, D, C. Okay? So again, you gotta, and again, my, my theory teacher always told me, get a piece of paper. Stop trying to do everything in your brain. He told me to count with my fingers, and he told me to write on a piece of paper. That's what he always told me to do. So if you ever need to, don't feel like, you know, that you shouldn't be doing that. Please do that, because just like my daughter, when I help her with her math, we are better getting the right answer the first time than getting it wrong because we assume something five times in a row, right? So if somebody says we're in the key of A minor, we're really in the key of C major. Now, why would we want to look at it like that? Okay, well, here's the reason is because if we can make an equation that A minor is really the key of C major, that helps us to, to go, okay, we don't have two different keys. C major isn't its own world over here with its own chords and its own scale shapes, blah, 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 to apply the fretboard. And A minor's over here, and it's its own world, and it's got its own chords and its own shapes and all this stuff. Because then you start thinking, well, what about G and B minor and E minor and F and D minor and C sharp minor? And you're like, holy crap, there's like 8 million things. There's not. A minor... Whenever somebody says, I'm in the key of blank minor, it's really the sixth chord of some major. But the artist, the songwriter, has chosen to emphasize the A minor chord as the tonality instead of the C major chord. The benefit of thinking of it that way is, if I can see something on my fretboard, for instance, even if I just knew this scale, <coughs> Just that first position, if, I, if that's all I knew was this, 
okay? If you were playing, a, you know, a rhythm in the key of C major, I could use that. If you were playing a rhythm in the key of A minor, I could still use that because these notes are the key of C. The chords of the A minor progression are still the key of C. Now, don't, don't get ahead of yourself. Just stay there for a second because I'm going to show you something. Okay, here we go. So this is going to be an A minor track. Okay, an actual A minor track. Here we go. Okay, I just got to figure it out because I don't know how it goes. So it's going A minor. To D minor. F. G. So that's what this particular jam track is using. Okay, these are not my jam tracks. I found these on iTunes. And I, I'll tell you what they are at the end here. So I've got A minor, D minor, F major, G major. Okay, so that's how this chord progression is going. So does A minor fit in the key of C? Yes, it does. It's the sixth chord. Does D minor fit in the key of C? Yes, it does. It's the two chord. Does F major fit in the key of C? Yes, it's the four chord. Does G major fit in the key of C? Yes, it does. It's the five chord. So all four of these chords that this jam track is playing are in the key of C. But it's emphasizing the A minor sound, the A minor tonality. Now, that, let me show you this, because what I'm going to do is exactly the same thing I did over the C major track. So watch this. All the notes work. Now, I haven't gotten to my directives yet. I haven't gotten to what I'm going to emphasize and blah, blah, blah. All I'm saying is there are four chords happening in this song. A minor, D minor, F and G. And as those chords are going by, I'm not going, okay, I'm in Mixolydian. Okay, I'm in Aeolian. Okay, I'm in Lydian. Okay, I'm in Mixolydian. I'm not. The song is in the key of A minor. And remember what I said last in the last session. Because we are soloing, we are not defining anything. The rhythm track, hey Kevin, the rhythm track defines the key and the mode of the song, not the guitar player. It's not like I start playing over the top and I change the key of the song. I don't. I don't. The song is, and this is something that's really important to understand, because we get so caught up with soloing all the time, we are not that important, okay? The rhythm of the song is, is the most important thing. The chords that are being played, that way when the singer's going to sing over the top or the guitar player's going to play over the top, we are, we are accentua accentuating the song, but the song is already there, that chord progression, okay? So as these chords are going by, I'm not in A minor, which is A Aeolian, and then D minor, which is uh, D uh, Dorian, because it's the two chord, and then F comes up, so now I'm in F Lydian. It doesn't work that way. Okay, and again, remember before you ever started playing modes and you used to jam pentatonics? You never thought of it that way. You just played a song, right? If it was going... When you heard that, you went, oh, it's Highway to Hell. Cool, I'm going to solo A. You know, you did your thing over the top. You didn't go, well, there's A, so now A, I got to be in the key of A, but then he kind of goes to a D with an F sharp, so now I got to kind of go, you didn't do that. Okay? Okay, so ready? Sort of. We're going to get to that. Okay? So, you, I mean, because we can both interact with what we call the modal sound, but before we get to the modal sound, which is the third level, let's just make sure we understand that, again, if we're, if we're in a logical key, right, like we just talked about, if you're doing something illogical like Slayer, then the rules are off because you can do anything you want because the song doesn't make any sense anyway, okay? Yes, it has a tonality of something's more important than something else, but the chords, you're not dealing with a key where all the chords fit into a key and everything's nice. So let's just stay in the world right now where we are dealing with 
a, a key that makes sense. It's logical, right? So the key of C is what we're dealing with. So we have seven chords, we have seven, seven notes and seven chords, one, four, five being major, two, three, six being minor, seven being diminished, okay? So in the first example, I played a chord progression that was going C to F. And all I did was meander using the notes of the C major scale. Now it sounded fine because they all fit. I haven't hit my directive yet, which is my third level. So I'm not there yet. Now we're playing a chord progression that's using A minor, D minor, F, and G. And I'm still using the notes of the C major scale because I am still in the key of C. The, the chord progression is emphasizing A minor, but I haven't hit my directive yet. The chord progression is still in the key of C major, and so am I. I'm still using the notes. Do you, does that make sense so far for everybody? Please give me a yes if that's making sense so far. Don't get ahead of yourself yet, because we're going to get to this. Okay? So these two songs I just played are the same thing, except one is emphasizing the C major tonality, and one is emphasizing the A minor tonality, but they are in the same key. Therefore, as I go to my guitar, awesome, it looks like everybody's getting this. Okay, so as I go to my guitar and play, I don't have to move to go to A minor. As a guitar player would think, I'm, A minor is part of a larger scheme, which is C major. Okay, and that's the part that confuses people because they think, okay, well, if it's A minor, I got to come down here. No, A minor, remember, A minor exists everywhere. C major exists everywhere, G major exists, and I'm not being cosmic, it really does. So if we can, again, bypass the guitar for now and just understand that if we're in the key of C major, we have these seven notes, these seven chords, and when I go to meander at this point, because I'm not defining anything yet, okay, as I meander, I'm just using the notes of the C major scale, just like we would do in pentatonic when we don't really know what we're doing, we're just cruising around playing the pentatonic scale and it sounds fine. But I'm doing that with the C major scale. So when this A minor chord progression comes up, I'm doing the same thing. I'm playing A minor is really the key of C. So I'm just using the notes of the C major scale, which is the notes of the A minor scale. Okay, Let that sink in for a second. So when we're thinking about playing in A minor, A minor is C major in theory. Because they're using the same chords, they're using the same notes. They, a, anytime somebody says the word minor, they're talking about something from a major. They're talking about a six chord from a major key. So if, if somebody says, hey, kryptonite, uh, I think it's called kryptonite, by three doors down, is B minor. And it is, it's B minor. Well, what does that mean? B minor really means D major. And by thinking of it that way, because remember, B minor would be the sixth chord, so it's really in the key of D major. And I, I know this because I've done it a million times. It might take you a little bit to get used to, but that's what it is. When I think of it that way, what happens then is I can see all the chords, because I know D major, okay? I know all, all seven of my chords in the key of D major. I can find them on my guitar. I can see my fretboard as D major, and I'm good to go. Okay? Instead of thinking of B minor as this other thing that isn't even related to D major, it's just this other thing. Well, now I got two more scales I got to learn. So every stinking time I learn a minor, I got to learn another key, another configuration on my fretboard. I don't have to do that. And this is where it gets awesome, is because now because we've got this major and minor, this slang, one and six chord, one being the major, six being the minor, this is where people went, Okay, that's cool, but what if I wanted to emphasize the two chord in the key of C major? We're going back to the key of C major now. What's the two chord in the key of C major? Well, the two chord in the key of C major would be D minor. Right? Hopefully that makes sense to you, right? The two chord of C major would be D minor. The second chord is D, and the quality is minor. So this is where, again, forget about your guitar for now. This is where the conflict began because people are like, well, okay, so if we're talking about that D minor right there, we can't call it D minor because if I say, hey, this song is in the key of D minor, you're going to think a six chord. So we can't call it D minor. We have to call it something else. And that's where the mode titles come from. Again, 
chicken or the egg, right? Which one came first? I'm not concerned about that. I'm not concerned about whether, thank you, Keith, whether historically, you know, it came from the, the name of a, because it did. I mean, there's, there's a whole Greek thing about this. I don't, I'm not looking for the history. I want you to understand what this means. So when somebody says Dorian, they're talking about a two chord. Okay, thank you, Shar. She got an aha moment, that's beautiful. So when people say Dorian, they gotta say Dorian. They can't just say minor. Because if they said minor, you and I would think six chord, because that's slang. We can't say that, we gotta say Dorian. So what does Dorian really mean to us? Dorian really just means two. That's all it means. Okay, so if somebody says to you, hey, this song is in D Dorian, Again, you could go, oh my God, now I gotta learn a whole other set of scales and a whole other set of things because I don't know Dorian. Yes, you do. D Dorian is really the key of C, using the chords of C and the scale shapes of C and everything else, okay? You already know D Dorian. It's really C major. Now I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna play a D Dorian track and I think this is moving from D minor to G, but let me double check because I played this before you got here. Yeah. So this track is going from D minor to G major. Well, does D minor fit in the key of C major, the chord D minor? Yes, it does. It's the two chord, obviously. Does G major fit in the key of C? Yes, it's the five chord. Okay, so all we're doing is playing two chords out of this key of C. We're just not emphasizing the C major chord. We don't even have it in here. So now I'm going to meander using the C major scale again. So here we go. Now again, I'm adding a little bit of this stuff down here, so I apologize, but I want you to get the point. I'm just playing the C major scale. I didn't have to move to D. I didn't have to do anything different. I'm still in the key of C. I'm still playing this C major scale. I'm still just playing that scale. But it's working. Why is it working? Because everything is in the key of C. These two chords that I'm playing, D minor and G major, are in the key of C. The scale I'm playing is the key of C, so needless to say, it's all going to work together. If you're with me so far, because this is huge, okay? This is why when I tell people, Dorian is really just a two, right? I, I don't care whether it's a Greek term that means large human with big pizza. I, I don't care what it means. It doesn't make any difference to me. Dorian just means two, right? So it's, it's, it's a second chord in the key of C, and it's just telling the world, and when I say I'm in D Dorian, it just means, hey, I'm in the key of C, but I'm emphasizing the second chord. That's all. Okay? Now, the awesome thing about this is all the modes are exactly the same. So if we're in the key of C, and we want to emphasize the three chord, which is... C, D, E minor, because a three is always minor, right? So now we're going to emphasize the three chord and then do something else with the chord progression. Again, I don't even know what it is. I'm going to listen to it. We're going to figure it out here. But the, the rhythm is telling me what key we're in, okay? Well, the name of the guitar track technically is, but... Okay, so here's E Phrygian. So let's hear what this is. So there's E minor. And then it goes to F, which makes sense because almost all the time when you're dealing with Phrygian, it's this half step from E minor to F. That's what makes the Phrygian sound is this half step. That whole sort of, you know, Spanish thing, you know, or... Um, um, White Rabbit, for instance, is which I think I used in an example on there, but um, in your guys' mode thing, I'm not sure. But anyway, so that's that's what Phrygian is. Now, I'm going to have that jam track play, and I'm still going to just meander C major over the top. 
because I'm still in C major using an E minor chord, which fits in the key of C major. And I'm going to use an F chord, which fits in the key of C major. It's the four chord. So again, I'm just playing the notes of a C major, although I am dabbling a little bit in this refinement thing I was talking about. I don't remember what word I used earlier, but that third level where I'm starting to make things sound more like they're supposed to, I, I'm doing that a little bit and I apologize if I'm getting ahead of myself. But the point is, okay, now we're in E Phrygian. Phrygian just means three. Yes, it can mean Greek God, you know, whatever, whatever. I don't care. The point is Phrygian means three to us, okay? If you're with me so far, again, I just want to make sure, give me a yes, okay? So hopefully this is making sense to you. So we've got the higher level here, which is we're in the key of some major. And now we're understanding that all these other modes are really just in that key. Okay, awesome. Okay, cool. Looks like you're all kind of getting this. Okay, good. Now. I can go through every one of these modes and do the exact same thing, okay? And just because it's 6.30, I don't know that I want to go through. It doesn't matter. I mean, you know, if I do the next one, it's going to be an F chord, right? It's going to be using chords of the key of C, but it's emphasizing an F chord. The next one's going to emphasize a G chord. And then we're back to the A minor, which is our six chord, okay? Jeremy says, well, let me get back to that, Jeremy. Um, let me get back to that, Jeremy, because that's going to th completely throw what I'm talking about off, this bigger picture thing. I will come back to that, though, Jeremy. Okay, so now let's look at this third level a little bit. Okay, the, before we start that, though, I want you to understand, I'm going to go back to the A minor, which is the sixth chord, or in theory, we, we'd call it A aeolian. Aeolian is the sixth chord. But, you know, very seldom do you go up to somebody and say, hey, um, you know, kryptonite by three doors down is in B aeolian. People are going to go, okay, fancy pants, right? We call it B minor, right? Because we do. Again, we can argue about aeolian and blah, 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 but that's what we're doing, okay? So we don't really say aeolian, which is the sixth chord. We just say minor. That's the slang that we use, okay? So I'm going to go back to this A minor one. Now we're going to get to the next level that some of you had asked about. But before we do that, let me once again reiterate, as the A minor is playing and the D minor is playing and the F major is playing and the G major is playing in this rhythm track, as every song just about that you've ever heard in your life has chord changes, every time there's a chord change, you're not switching modes, right? When you play... <laughs> Angus isn't sitting there going, I wonder what mode that is. I wonder what we're supposed to be doing here. He's not thinking about it like that. He's just playing, right? Because all the chords are part of a bigger picture, which is the key that you're in. Okay? Because now as I start talking, I don't want to lose anybody because it's going to get a little bit, a little bit weird here. Okay? So as long as you can understand that all four of these chords, A minor, D minor, F, and G, are all part of the key of A minor which is really the key of C. That's all that's happening. So if you're micro, you know, dissecting and going, well, when the A minor comes up, I need to be in A minor, but when the D minor comes up, I need to be in uh, D Dorian, but then when the F chord, no, 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 no. You can think about it like that all you want, but you're just going to make yourself crazy because that's happening organically anyway. You can't control that, okay? If you want to really think of it on that tiny, a uh, minute little level, in theory, I suppose that's what's happening. But that's what's happening in every song ever. Sweet Home Alabama, it's happening. But you don't think of it. You just, you know, because it's chords. They're just chords that are happening that are part of a key. And we accept that as okay. But when we go to solo over the top, all of a sudden we start going, oh, well, if I'm going to solo over this, then D has to be Mixolydian. But then C, I've got to solo in Lydian. Well, then G... No, man, you were doing greater when you were just rocking in pentatonic, it sounded better. 
and hopefully that makes sense to you. You can try and go way deep in there, but you're just going to drive yourself crazy because you're looking at it from the wrong angle. That's in theory, yes, I suppose harmonically that's what's happening. A minor is A minor and or A aeolian and D minor is uh, Dorian and so on. But we got to zoom back out again and go, hey, we're just in the key of A minor here. We're just in the key of C, right? Okay, so now I go to my guitar and I'm going to solo over this track. And this is going to go for everything that you do from here on out, whether it's modes or not. You're going to start, let's start with step one. Step one is, yes, paralysis through analysis. You got it, Andrew. That's exactly right. And hopefully you're all with me. Hopefully I haven't lost anybody with what I just said, okay? I'm just saying before you started modes, you never thought about it that way. You never micro dissected anything. You just took the song for what it was and had fun with it. But now that we're learning these, we're going, okay, so every time there's a chord progression, I got to switch modes. I got to, no, 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 no. Okay. You don't want to do that. So now step one, I'm going to now take this key, which right now I'm dealing with the key of C, which is fine. Right. And I want to set it on my fretboard whether or not you know this much or this much or this much or this much or this much is entirely up to you okay but please understand that once you apply the key of C to the fretboard however much of the key of C that you know okay however much of it you know is entirely up to you no matter where you go on the fretboard you're in the key of C. If I play the C major scale here, I'm in the key of C. If I go down here, I'm still in the key of C. If I go up here, I'm still in the key of C. Which means I'm also in the key of D Dorian. No matter where I go, I'm in the key of D Dorian. Now please stay with me for a second. No matter where I go, I'm in the key of E Phrygian or F Lydian or G Mixolydian, or A minor, A Aeolian, no matter where I go. We are programmed as guitar players to go, oh, it's in A, so I got to go to the fifth fret. Oh, it's in G, so I got to go to the third fret. We're programmed that way because we've learned our chords and all these kind of things that way. But the truth is that's, that's not true. You don't have to go to those places. I could stay in this one spot like I've been doing, like I've been showing you this entire time. I never have to go anywhere. And I can make this sound like C major, or D Dorian, or E Phrygian, or F Lydian, or G Mixolydian by doing what Joe just said, emphasizing notes. It's not about where you go on the fretboard. It's about what you do when you get there. So I'm going to take a step back just to, to remind you, when you were learning your pentatonic, you learned five positions of your pentatonic to cover your fretboard. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I'm just saying that's how it works, right? You didn't go to the second position of minor pentatonic and go, oh, I'm doing something else now. You, you were completely fine with understanding that when you went to that second position, you're still playing A minor pentatonic or whatever key you're in. You were just in the second position playing the same notes or the third position playing the same notes and it never bothered you once. But when modes come up, all of a sudden we start going, oh, so this shape is Dorian. Oh, so this shape is Mixolydian. And I get it. I totally get it. I've been there. I understand. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm not saying that you can't look at it that way. What I'm saying is just scan out, telescope out, and understand that whatever you see on your fretboard for C major, whether it's this one spot or two positions or three positions, those positions are all just making one big thing across the fretboard, which is C major, which is D Dorian, which is E Phrygian. Okay, okay, if I play C plus A minor, forget about positions for a second. Don't even think about positions. Don't even think about positions yet, okay? Try and scrap that from your mind because all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stay right here and I'm going to solo. So again, what we know is that we're whatever mode we're in, we're really in a major key. And we also know that there are inevitably going to be chord progressions. There's going to be chord changes. It'd be an awfully boring song if it just stayed on one chord. Okay. There's going to be chord changes. Every time there's a chord change, that does not mean you're switching modes. Okay. 
music doesn't work that way. You can think of it that way. You can go as deep as you want. You can go anthill if you want to, okay? But if you scope back out, you're going to realize that that was never what music was when you first started learning how to play songs. You weren't going, okay, I'm in a key, now I'm in another key, now I'm in another key, now I'm in another key. No, you accepted it as all being just one happy family. It all worked together. So now, if that makes sense, okay, so now we understand that no matter how much of your fretboard you know, the fretboard, as you connect those pieces together, okay, it, and let's just take hypothetically that you've connected the entire fretboard together as C major. You can see the all those seven positions, you can see them all right across here. You can look down and you can see them all connected. Let's just say that. Okay. If you can do that, you now can see the key of C major across the entire fretboard. And you are free and you are welcome to go anywhere you want. So if I play the key of C major and I do this... around this big connected thing that is C major. That's all I'm doing. The song is moving from C to F, but it's not like the F chord comes up and in my mind I go, whoop, F Lydian. I gotta switch everything to F Lydian. I'm in F Lydian. Because I'm in the key of C major. It's all happening anyway. I don't have to force myself to rethink something that's already happening. It's already there. If I'm playing in C major, I'm playing in F Lydian. I'm playing in G Mixolydian. I'm playing in A Aeolian. The difference is emphasis. And this is the, the last part I want to get to, okay? So we have our understanding. Now we've got our setup on our fretboard. Okay? We can see the key of C major across the whole fretboard, again, hypothetically. So as this chord progression is playing, this C F chord progression is playing. I'm not thinking, okay, F is at the first fret, so I gotta come down here. Oh, here comes C, so I gotta go to the eighth fret. I don't care about that at all. I'm gonna move around this skeleton that I've created, this skeletal shape system that I've learned, okay? And I'm going to emphasize different things at different times because that's what music is supposed to do. Not because I'm in Dorian and I'm in Mixophrygian and I'm in Phrygolidian and all these other things. And I'm not trying to make fun of it, but I kind of am because I know exactly where you are. Because this was the reason I almost wound up quitting college. Was this whole mode thing. It just terrified me because I was like, there's no way I can learn all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, this thing hit me and went, man, you are thinking way too hard. So... This chord progression is now playing a C chord and an F chord back and forth. I know I'm in the key of C. I can see it on my fretboard. So as I move around the fretboard doing all the things that I've always enjoyed doing, meandering, blah, 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 licks, patterns, all these other things that you do, I'm not going to stop doing those because I'm now in a mode. I'm going to do all those things. But when I'm here, as the C chord is being played, if I choose to, I'm going to try and emphasize something that is compatible with the chord that's being played, which is what we call logic. If you've watched any of my chord chasing stuff or any of the melody stuff or you know, all these kind of things, that's, that's not modes. I mean, it is, but it's logic. It's just logic. If an A minor, or let's just stay with C. If a C major chord is being played by somebody, and I go to solo over the top, regardless if I'm in pentatonic or diatonic or mode or anything that I'm thinking in my head, logic, music tells me, I should probably try and emphasize something on my fretboard that makes sense with what the rhythm player is doing. Just like if I was gonna sing. If, if, if I hit this chord and I say to you, sing. And after you went, ah, right? And you started singing. Either what comes out of your mouth is compatible with this, or it's not. 
You're not going in your mind, okay, well, let's see, okay, so it's a C, so I'm going to say E Phrygian. You're not thinking that at all. The sound that comes out of your mouth is either going to match what I'm doing or it's not. Okay, so as that C chord is being played, I'm now looking at my fretboard in more of a caged way maybe in my, in my mind. I'm just telling you what's going on in my head. Okay, so I can start kind of skeletaling, again a word I don't really know that if that's a real word, but I start skeletizing my fretboard so the notes of the C major scale kind of, or excuse me, the C major chord, the, the C chord, kind of rise to the surface. So now as I go to play, I start looking for notes that are compatible with the C chord. And then when the F chord comes up, I start looking for some notes that are compatible with the F chord. Now again, there, there is another level below this, but just follow me for this for right now, okay? So let me show you that. Okay, so I'm going to hit play again. We're going to do this again. I'm going to play nice and slow. See how right there I went into a pattern? Because I would do that. I would do that. That's a normal thing for me. I would play some melody and then I would go into that. So really at this point, what am I thinking about with modes? Nothing. The, the, the theory of the modes set me up with what key I'm really in, what chords I've got, how I'm going to see it on my fretboard. Once I start playing, I'm less concerned with modes because I've done all the work. I'm just going to get in there and start making some music. Okay, Shar says, please explain how to find compatibility. Okay, I'm not sure what you mean exactly, Shar, but, but if, if what you mean is, like when the C chord is being played, I'm thinking about the triad. I'm thinking about the notes. Well, there's two things I could be thinking about, Shar. I could be thinking about the notes C, E, and G, because those are the notes that make up the C chord. And then when the F chord comes up, I could be thinking about F, A, and C. But let me be completely honest with you, Shar. I don't really think of it that way. I'm not sitting there thinking about notes the entire time I'm playing at all. I'm, I'm seeing shapes. I can see a C chord across my entire fretboard all over the place. I can see an F major chord across my fretboard. I can see an A minor chord across my fretboard. So I've got two layers that I'm always dealing with in my brain. I've got my scale and I've got chords that are happening. And these chords that are happening are either compatible with the scale that I'm seeing, or sometimes they're not. Sometimes I might get a chord, again, this goes back to the very first thing we talked about, where right now we're talking about everything being logical. But sometimes you have things that are illogical. And when those things happen, I can see that, because I can see my scale. And then you tell me to play, for instance, a C minor chord over a C major chord, and all of a sudden, I, in my mind, I go, okay, well, that doesn't work. Okay? so. Just to point out a couple other things to make sure we're okay, because I, I don't want to lose anybody here. Um, let's talk about modes now. Let's let's if you if you're maxed out, you can stop watching and you can stop right there, and you could be very successful with this. Okay, so I don't want to throw anybody on you know in a loop here by talking the next thing I'm going to talk about. Okay, so if you've had enough and you're feeling good, do not feel bad to hang up on me and just say goodbye and be good because I don't want to confuse you. But the next thing I'm going to talk about is the modal element, which is what we call color. Okay? So when I go to solo over something, I do have the opportunity in my mind, there's going to be two different things to this, okay, to emphasize certain pitches over certain chords 
to get a particular kind of sound. Now, again, if I zoom out, okay, Lamont, that, that's, that, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't do a lot of economy picking. I really don't. The, the majority of what I do is alternate picking, and I do hammer-ons and pull-offs is primarily what I do. The only time I really use economy picking is when I'm, uh, when I'm sweeping. Otherwise, everything is all picking. That's mostly what I do with, with a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs kind of embedded in between. Um, but anyway, that's a whole other conversation. I don't want to get too far off the topic here. So here's what happens, everybody. So now I've got this C chord. Now, again, this is, this is micro now. This is, this is unnecessary to the bigger picture, but I want you to understand it. So as a musician, as a guitar player, as a whatever I'm going to call myself, as that C chord is being played, I can emphasize the note C, the note E, and the note G. Okay, Chris says, uh, I'm sorry, I, I keep getting off here. Seems like knowing the notes on the fretboard would, would make the modes and keys much easier to see. It might, and it might not, Chris. Again, that's the default that everybody goes to is, well, if I knew all my notes and I knew all the notes, how long is it going to take you to do that? How long is it going to take you to learn all the notes on your fretboard? I mean, really learn them and all the notes of the mode that you're trying to do and then correlate those together in real time. And I guarantee you, Chris, the majority of players that you listen to don't look at it that way. They might say that they do, but they don't. Even jazz guys, you learn automation. The whole thing with, with fluidity and real time and jamming and improvising is fluidity. So I'm not saying that that's bad, Chris, and I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm saying that if you're going to go that route, it's going to take you a lot longer to get to something that is, which, which I'm not going to say it won't happen. I'm saying it's just going to take a lot longer to get that way. So again, you're missing out on all, this, all the wonders of making music, of hearing these sounds, which I'm going to talk about. That's what I was talking about. You're going to miss out on all that because now you've convinced yourself that you have to know this one thing. I'm not saying that it couldn't make you a killer player because it might. But that that's that's a that's another path that's gonna you know they're roadblocks that's just another thing where you go where because I, I deal with this all the time in teaching where somebody will go maybe if i did this okay well that's great now you've got this huge task in front of you um well it could chris but but let me tell you this though chris chris said in terms of knowing the chord tones absolutely you are correct but i also guarantee you that over time of practicing this you're going to learn where they are anyway let me show you what i mean so if I was going to be playing, this is what I was talking about before, if I was going to be playing a C chord, C chord is being played underneath me. So I go to solo over the top. And again, this is a micro thing. I know I can move across the fretboard and I can emphasize the, the notes of that chord freely at any time. And that's what I want to do. That's the bottom line. That's why I told you, hang up if you need to. But if you want to look on a deeper level, what happens is, if I'm emphasizing C over C, it's a C chord being played and I'm emphasizing the note C, I'm doing what's, what's normal. If I start emphasizing the note E, consistently emphasizing the note E, I am adding in an E Phrygian flavor to the chord progression that's happening because I'm emphasizing the note E. Now, if I'm just emphasizing C's and E's and G's, there, which is what, again, that's what we should be doing, okay? If we're doing that, which is what we should be doing, we're getting a whole host of colors of, of sounds. But in our mind, if we really want to emphasize the E tonality, we're adding the sound of an E Phrygian over the top of this C. Here's the thing I want you guys to understand. Does your audience really recognize that? Or is it more about you? And the truth is, it's more about you. You're, let me show you what I mean. Here it comes again. See, I was emphasizing E over the C. But because they're part of the same harmonic structure, the, the listener isn't going to go, wow, that's really, that's really Phrygian-y. 
The only time it's really going to be Phrygian-y is when the chord progression is giving me Phrygian. So I can micro in my brain and go down there and start really thinking about that. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I can do that, and I have done that a million times. But in the bigger scheme of things, the audience, the listener, isn't really necessarily getting what you're trying to put in. You might be putting in 80%. They're only getting 3% out of it because they're like, it's, it just sounds like you're soloing. It sounds great. Everything sounds good. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? So in our minds, we can go as deep as we want with this sort of thing. Now, here's the last thing I want to get before you guys go. The other thing that I can do is I can start looking at each mode's color tones. Okay? Which really kind of means they're not the core tones. They're not the root the third and the fifth. They're not those notes. Those are the notes that we know are comfortable. Those are what we'll call the warm, the warm notes. Those are the notes that if we emphasize over the chord C, if we emphasize C, E, and G over C, and again, I'm talking micro now. All this stuff is a, is a head thing for you and me. It's not for the audience because the audience isn't getting all this. Okay? But what I'm saying is, Instead of emphasizing the C or the E or the G over that chord, if I decide to emphasize something else, which in the case of um, C would probably be the seventh, would be the, the biggest one to try and do, the B. So let me show you this for a second. Do you hear that sound? That's where the cool thing about the mode can kind of come through is, sorry, when you're not emphasizing the, the root, the third, and the fifth, but you actually emphasize one of the, the other chord tones, which we'll call the color tone, excuse me, the non-chord tone, which is the color tone. Now again, we can go into a conversation of, well, B is really the major seventh of C. Yes, 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 it all, any note can be a part of a chord. But what, what I'm saying is, Traditionally, the chord that's being played is a, is a triad. When I go outside that triad and I start emphasizing the two or the four or the six or the seven or something else, I am now adding a new color sound to that chord, which is changing the structure, which is creating something new. But what you really have to understand about that, guys, is it means I really got to go out of my way to make that be something that the audience is going to hear. If I just play it, then I'm back to this micro thing where I'm like, okay, well, I played that note, so I'm in mixed Lydian, and now I played that note, so I'm in Lydian. Well, now I played that note, so I'm in Locrian. It doesn't, it, music doesn't work that way. I can't, that means every time I play a note, I'm in a different mode. So in order for us to really make a non-chord tone something authentic, or whatever note we choose to emphasize, we really got to emphasize it so it's something that is noticeable by somebody. If it just happens, it's just like when you played your pentatonic. You played all the notes, and you never thought twice about it. You never went, well, when I play that note, I'm actually in this key, but when I play that note, I'm actually in this. You just played them all because they're part of the same family, and the same thing's happening here. So again, as we, as we zoom out, nothing's changing for them. What's changing is for us as guitar players. So as I emphasize that B, I'm really trying to give them this major seven sound over that C chord. They may or may not get it. But in my mind, I'm like, wow, I'm really giving them this because this is something unique. And maybe it is. Maybe it is something really cool. And another conversation that we're not going to be able to get into now, which I think some of you got to, were things like parallel keys or forcing a mode where it does not belong, which happens. Again, it's music. We can do whatever we want. So we have this logical world. What can happen is you go, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, sh I'm going to tell you, Randy. Um, you might, um, you, I mean, again, forcing a mode is something that doesn't, it's not a natural thing that happens in the music world uh, in terms of harmonics because we have this whole thing we just talked about today. But forcing would mean you're in, a major but you're forcing mixolydian over the top because you want the sound of that and where does that work really well in songs that have minimal chord progression or chord changes 
or songs that have very very long chord change or chords before a change occurs where you've got a lot of time to really try something you know if your song is going you don't have I mean you can't really be doing anything with that but if your song is going and you wanted to try and force something from a guitar perspective because it would benefit the song you could do that it kind of falls into my chord chasing thing where you're now you're you're not worrying about whether you're in a key or not you're forcing something that doesn't necessarily fit to make it sound different okay uh, that's a whole that's a whole other co uh, topic of oh and the last one I was going to tell you was power chords that's why mode people love rock and love metal because a power chord isn't major or minor or if you think about it it's both it can be whatever you want it to be okay Jeremy mode to focus on when playing the blues major would be mixolydian minor would be Dorian because they use the dominant seven so if you're soloing in minor if you're doing minor play Dorian if you're playing major play mixolydian okay Randy the backing tracks the the name of this this uh, uh, album that I bought here is called it's on iTunes might be on something else too I'm sure it probably is but it's called the company is called Jam Tracks Mania so please write that down Jam Tracks Mania and the name of the album is Groovin Through the Modes and what's awesome about it is he's just got yeah no worries but he's got C major D Dorian E Phrygian F Lydian G Mix Lydian A Aeolian B Locrian and uh, they're, they're all there. So you could literally just do exactly what we just talked about today to every one of those tracks and just move through the level. Start at level one and just use meandering. Go to level two, which is start moving around the fretboard, and then go to level three, which is, okay, let's start finding something to emphasize at various times, okay? We are not obligated and, and if you've seen some of my other courses I know I talk about these things but we are not obligated to create melody all the time sometimes we play licks sometimes we just go off but we do have to tip our hat to the melody sometimes because that's what people acknowledge you know metal players love fast things and all this kind of stuff but if if I'm writing a solo for a song if I've been hired by a company or a, a, a band or whatever to write a solo you know, I gotta, I gotta listen to the song and see what the song needs. Not just what do I wanna do to try and be impressive and fast. Wh what does the song need? What, wh how can I contribute to the song to make the song a better song? Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened with your, it looks like everybody else had, had, a, had a pretty smooth ride here with, with the sound and things like that not cutting out. But I will post it in the, um, the Modes uh, Facebook group. I'll, I'll put that up there. Parallel keys, buddy, I don't have time to go into, but it is in your in your modes made easy. So um, if you didn't get it this week, you'll get it next week because that's one of the things that are coming up. So um, Jeremy says, does it seem like learning the seven major scale shapes seems a million times harder? <laughs> yes, it does. But that's us, Jeremy. That's us that's making it harder. If you accept it as all being one of the same thing like you did with pentatonic, I guarantee you it's going to get easier for you. But it's because we're trying to define these as being labeled as Mixolydian. And, and I get it. Again, I, I went through the same things you guys are going through. I'm just telling you, I found solace at the top of the hill by going, geez, that was a lot. That was like trigonometry trying to figure this out. Once you get all of this stuff that you're doing, all this stuff that we're talking about, once it starts making sense and you can use it in your playing and you're having fun and you're making music and everything like that, you can start studying modes on a far more complex level. But don't do that now because it's just going to get in the way of being productive and getting yourself to another level. Okay? Yeah, Randy, like I said, I don't have time for that. I, it's 7 o'clock and i got to get going. But there, either this week or next week in your modes made easy, it, it talks about parallel parallel keys um, and that's something that we can talk about next time too so um, not in here but just the next webinar or the next live session that I do we can talk about parallel keys too or it's something you guys should talk about in the community group in the um, either, either Facebook community group or the modes group so um, anyway I, I really got to get going guys so take care and
stay positive, and I will post this in the Facebook group in just a little bit. And uh, <laughs> how about parallel parking? <laughs> I could talk about that too, I suppose. <laughs> Oh, that is so awesome. All right, everybody, take care. God bless. Good night. Enjoy yourselves. Go have a drink and smile and give someone a hug. <laughs>